Welcome to RISC 66 Accelerated Training Video on Lost Development Triangles. I'm Tim Coomer. Let's get started. A Lost Development Triangle is a unique way of arranging the annual loss evaluations for several past policy periods. By arranging the loss evaluation for past years in a table as shown below, we can analyze the change in losses from one evaluation to the next. The arrangement of the losses in the table, as you see below, looks sort of like a triangle, and that's where we come up with the name Lost Development Triangle. The Lost Development Triangle is an analytical technique used by actuaries to determine loss development factors and to better understand how losses develop over time. If you would like to better understand why an actuary needs loss development factors, see our training video on loss development factors. It may take several years for all claims in a given policy period to be reported and closed. New information pertaining to existing claims can impact the total losses long after the end of the policy period. Unfortunately, even new claims are sometimes reported after the close of the policy period. Therefore, a snapshot or summarized evaluation of the losses is generally made at least once a year. As you see in this graph here, at the end of 2013, we estimated the losses to be for the 2012 policy period at the level shown. But then at the end of 2014, the losses were assessed again for the same 2012 policy period, and we see an increase in the estimated ultimate incurred losses. The development in the losses is the quantitative change in this evaluation from year to year. We are often asked, why does loss development occur? There are two primary reasons. First, sometimes losses that occur during a certain period are not reported until a later date. These additional loss dollars are referred to as incurred but not reported losses. A common abbreviation for this term is IBNR. Case reserves, amounts set aside for future payments on a claim, must sometimes be adjusted as more information about a loss becomes available. Adjustments are also made to claims that have been closed and reopened. This growth in the claim results in loss development. An important thing to remember though is that case reserves do not include IBNR. Development is defined as IBNR plus the changes in case reserves on open or previously closed but reopened claims. If both paid and reported loss information is available, it is common to create a loss triangle using both sets of data. This is called the paid method and the incurred method. Then the decision is made as to which method produces the most reliable results. This decision is based primarily on the volatility of the development patterns. The data should be segregated between lines of coverage such as auto, general liability, workers' compensation, and others. The data can be limited to a certain per occurrence loss limit, but only if all claims for all periods are limited to the same value. For example, you may want to use loss limits if you are projecting losses within a certain range, like under $100,000. This might occur if an insurance program is being considered with a $100,000 deductible. There may be other reasons why you might want to forecast losses under a specific loss limit. Here we see the first step of the incurred loss method and the paid method. On the left we have incurred losses in the triangle and on the right we have paid losses in the triangle. As you would expect, the incurred losses are higher than the paid amounts as shown in the two triangles. To build a loss development triangle, you need either the paid losses or the incurred losses depending on which method you are using. Paid losses are simply the payments made on the claims and incurred losses would be the payments made on the claims plus the case reserves. And if you have any reserves, of course, then the reported amount should be greater than the paid amount, as we saw earlier in our sample incurred and paid loss development triangles. The number of loss periods you will need to create a credible analysis varies based on a number of factors. Five to ten years of data is often sufficient. You will also need industry development factors as a standard to measure against. We usually call this a benchmark. These are available through various data gathering organizations such as 
The National Council on Compensation Insurance, which is usually referred to as NCCI, and the Insurance Services Office, ISO, are the publications such as Best Aggregates and Averages, and you can also sometimes get this information from brokers, actuaries, and insurance companies. Here we see the next step in the loss development triangle process. We see the factors that are being computed for each of the past policy periods for the 12 to 24 months, 24 to 36, and so forth. But at the bottom of the table, we see the benchmark numbers. Now this is what we're referring to here from either NCCI, ISO, best aggregates and averages, or, or wherever else you might obtain the information. But these benchmarks are important in comparing the experience you're seeing in the client firm against some industry-wide benchmark. There are pros and cons as to which type of data is most useful when generating a loss development triangle. A reported loss triangle is most useful when the claim reporting pattern and reserving philosophy are consistent for each loss period. Development patterns based on reported losses tend to be less volatile than patterns based on paid losses. A paid loss triangle, however, is most useful when the claim payment pattern and claim settlement philosophy are consistent for each loss period. In addition, since case reserves are excluded, and remember here, the incurred triangle uses incurred losses, which is the paid amount plus the case reserves. And when we're talking about the paid loss triangle, we're using just the paid loss amounts, and the case reserves aren't part of it. So since the case reserves are excluded, the development patterns are not skewed by changes in reserving philosophies. So let's build a loss development triangle. Enter the incurred losses as of each evaluation date. So we start our triangle by considering the different evaluation dates we have and building a triangle that looks like this and filling each of those cells with the appropriate incurred loss evaluation uh, as of that time period for that policy period. Next, once we have the triangle filled with the loss amounts for each of the evaluation dates, for each of the policy periods, we can now do some simple arithmetic. Uh, let's compute the 24 to 36 month development factor for the 2012 policy period. We do that simply by dividing the $2,133,656 by the $1,823,638 and that results in a factor of 1.17 which we record in the 24 to 36 month cell for the 2012 policy period. Selected factors are usually a combination of the unique averages for the company that's being analyzed and industry factors. Additional information concerning the losses, changes in reserve practices, implementation of loss control or prevention programs, or other considerations may also influence the determination of the selected factors. Careful consideration of such subjective data is where actuarial judgment, beyond simply following a formula, enters the process for selecting factors. The yellow highlighted cumulative factor 1.25 represents the development factor that applies to losses that are evaluated at 36 months. This is the 36 to ultimate development factor. It is computed by multiplying the following selected factors together. The 60 to ultimate factor times the 48 to 60 factor times the 36 to 48 factor. And let's walk through it here. So the 36 to ultimate factor is going to equal the 1.25, which is computed and highlighted in the cumulative row there in yellow, 1.25, and that equals 1.1, which is a 36 to 48 factor, times 1.03, the 48 to 60 factor, times 1.1, the 60 to ultimate factor. We now have a completed loss development triangle and selected loss development factors. The next step is to apply the information. The ultimate incurred losses for each loss period can now be estimated. For example, the 2015 12-month evaluation of $1,225,750 is multiplied by the 12-month to ultimate loss development factor of 3.12 to yield an estimated ultimate loss amount of $3,824,340. There are several ways you can use a loss development triangle. You can use a paid loss development triangle to compute payout percentages. You can compute implied development. 
You can benchmark yourself or the company that the analysis is being completed for against others in their industry. And also you can do a collateral comparison. So if an insurance company has provided the collateral requirement for a particular policy period, you can use the loss development factor from the triangle and determine the estimated ultimate incurred losses and then compare that to the collateral requirement. There are several potential pitfalls with putting together a loss development triangle. Usually these occur in the selection of the loss development factors to be used in the analysis. You want to make sure that the triangle is built with losses that reflect the appropriate loss retention. And this is where consistency comes into play. You want to make sure not only you're using the right loss retention and you're using it consistently through the history of the data that you're gathering, but that you also are using incurred losses or unpaid losses as appropriate for the type of triangle you're building. And finally, you want to recognize the variability in the factors and not just pick the maximum or minimum of a factor in a given column. I want to stress that you do want to make sure that your triangle matches the retention that you will use in your analysis. And if for some reason you don't have a triangle that matches that retention, then it is best to utilize a triangle built on unlimited losses. A loss triangle is really a valuable tool to determine if your claims administrator has changed their reserving practice. Consistency is the key to successful estimating development. If the order of magnitude of development factor suddenly changes, then you should immediately review the reserving process. If in fact the process has changed, then estimated outstanding liabilities may prove to be erroneous, which may affect your balance sheet. To conclude, developing unique factors based on historical data provides for more accurate financial estimates. So who should develop a loss development triangle? We recommend you utilize an actuary to complete the necessary calculations. But as long as you grasp the basic concepts outlined in this video, you should be able to complete the process of developing a loss development triangle. For expanded information, please see the resources listed along with this video or contact Sigma Actuarial Consulting Group at support at sigmaactuary.com. Thank you for taking time to watch this Lost Development Triangle training video from Risk 66.